Today we speak about uh, Python again. We speak about uh, what we call the Python intermediate, uh, um, in the sense that uh, now after these uh, three hours of Python basics and this uh, uh, lab on Monday, you should have, uh, you have the basic knowledge for creating uh, Python program from scratch. You should be able to create your own program with, uh, uh, by developing your own uh, algorithm and whatever. But typically in a realizing uh, application, you can, we can say stand on the shoulder of giant that is uh, reuse ping libraries, packages, frameworks, modules, whatever, made by others developer in the world potentially. So you can use the li these libraries to integrate uh, these functionalities in your application. And in looking for this library, you could uh, always keep in mind a uh, design and programming principle that is KISS, that is not to KISS the, the verb, but is uh, an acronym for keep it simple stupid. You can put it, uh, keep, keep it simple, comma stupid, or, your, or keep it simple stupid. That is try to make pink simple as much simple as possible. Maybe it's not, not more complex than, than necessary. So what can we integrate in our program? So libraries and packages typically to provide what? More functionality, more algorithm and so on to your own program. You wrote your own program and then you can add something else to improve to add functionality to your program. These functionalities, these libraries, could be uh, support for complex mathematical operation, could be statistical packages, uh, could be interfaces towards the operating system in which your um, program works, or could be libraries, second category, libraries and packages to integrate external services, cloud services, web service, like the weather, you don't uh, compute on your computer what is the weather in Turin tomorrow. You ask something, someone, somewhere for this information. Or social networks, you integrate maybe with Facebook, with Twitter, with other social networks, with a chat messaging system, and something like that. So you can integrate mainly these two categories of things. More functionality and link to external service. To use these other Python packages in your application, you should do typically two things. The first one is install them. Sometimes this is not needed because maybe the functionality is uh, included in Python. So you have only to import them, not to install. But in most cases, you need to install them. Python uh, modules can be installed with a command that is available in every Python installation that is the pip command. So if you uh, want to install a package here, a package name, a package named, uh, for example, Flask, you can digit in your command prompt, your terminal, pip install or sudo pip install in, uh, on Linux and um, Mac OS, uh, pip install the name of the package that you want to install. And this will install the, the package on your computer with all of its dependencies and made available to your Python program so that you can import this information and use it. Yeah, if you want to learn more about PIP, there is an entire website and uh, we will skip this for now. So today we'll try to create something that uh, uses two different uh, libraries uh, in uh, Python and we, would realize, we will realize a simple Telegram bot. Do you know what is a Telegram bot? Yes. So we want to realize this Telegram bot that uh, performs three operations. The first one is simple, greet us. When we connect to this bot, it will say hi. The second one is uh, uh, 
that this bot will act as a textual pharaoh. It will perform an eco operation. So we write something and the bot say something, the same thing, something back to us in textual form. And the third thing is act a voice pharaoh. So we write something and tell, and this bot will reply with the same thing that we brought, but as a voice message, not a text message. So we would like to implement this three operation in creating this uh, MEI bot. So yeah, what is a Telegram bot? Maybe you, you already know. A Telegram bot is a third party application, a program that a third party, not Telegram, created that however run inside, you can say Telegram. So users that use Telegram can interact with bots by sending them three types of requests. The first are messages, normal messages, text, voice messages. The second one are commands that are, we can say, specific, particular messages. And the third one is inline request. So inline request in another conversation you can call, you can send a request to your bot. Today we will concentrate on the first two. We will skip this inline request for time purposes. And developers, not users, can control their bots using the API, using the, the services provided by Telegram, or some dedicated library that uh, is what we uh, do today. This dedicated library, uh, do you know what is an API? Yeah, what is an API? Uh, stand for, API stand for? And I, I'm not a dog, so I don't listen. Sorry. Louder. API. You, you, you told. Application. Application. Programming interface. Programming interface. Yeah. It's an interface for programming application. And dedicated library wrap this API and provide a easier way to interact with this API to developer in a predefined uh, programming language. So you maybe have uh, um, the libraries in Python for interacting with the Telegram bot API, libraries in Java, libraries in C Sharp, library in Rust, uh, library in whatever programming language to, in, to work with this API. Yeah, if you want, there is plenty again of documentation about bots on Telegram. So how we create a generic Telegram bot? First of all, we need to ask a bot for creating uh, our bot. Mm -hmm. This bot that is provided by Telegram is Botfather. Mm -hmm. We so start a conversation with Botfather. Uh, that is a bot, again, provided by Telegram. Botfather will ask us for two things. The first one is a name for our bot. Every bot has a name. This name could not be unique for every bot, so more than one bot could have the same name. And then a username that must be unique on the Telegram platform and that must end in a bot. So for example, here as a name I choose Amybot, written with capital A, like yes, MEI written in the same way and bot with a capital B. And uh, as a username I choose last week, MEI2017 underscore bot because the MEI bot uh, was already taken. When you give this information to Botfather, the name and the username, Botfather will reply you with uh, a token to use the Telegram API and a link to start the, com the conversation with this bot. The token is needed, is mandatory, to interact with the Telegram API. Without the, te the, the token, you cannot call, you cannot use uh, the API of Telegram for creating, for using bot. So let me start Telegram just to check that it works. Yeah. Okay, this is a, a token, the token of our bot. The token that I will use today, and then in a few days I will deactivate this because this 
then we'll go on YouTube and whatever. I don't want my token on the internet forever. So I will then deactivate this, but for these days is uh, it's working. Um, so I, I just created the, the bot with the bot father. Uh, so bot father created space, we can say for a bot on uh, um, the Telegram uh, server. So how will our bot work? So we have three main uh, actors here. We have users somewhere. We have the MI bot that will run here on this computer. And then we have a Telegram server, the Telegram service somewhere in the world. So our bot sometimes will ask continuously periodically, ask for updates to the Telegram service. That is, I don't know, every second or less than one second, our bot will say, Telegram, do you have any update for me? And Telegram will reply, yes, no. And if he reply yes, he will give to the bot all the updates that he have. Updates are messages that he received while the bot is on and a command that you received while the bot is on and in line request, this three information. And it continues to ask this information. Do you have updates, do you have updates, do you have updates? Every single time, no matter what happens in this side here from the user part. So when a user starts a conversation with the MUI bot, the conversation starts with the start command. The conversation goes to the Telegram service and the Telegram service uh, provide uh, replying to one of these, uh, do you have an update for me, request from the bot, provides this uh, uh, start message, the start command from a given user. So this is the user number one, and this is the start message from the user number two, number one. Hmm? Then he received uh, the start command, so by default the start command provide a greet, a greeting to the new user, it send the greeting message, hello, to the Telegram uh, server that deliver to the user in, the, in, its, uh, in her application. Then the user send a text voice message, whatever, to the, to, to, to the bot, same as before, the, te the message is processed here, when the MEI bot asks for update, Telegram gives all the new messages to the bot. Hmm? The bot uh, analyze the, the message and do whatever it needs to do and send the response to the user, response that go to the Telegram server and the Telegram server deli deliver the response to the user and so on. Hmm? Okay, clear how it works. There is this three actor the MA bot that ask continuously for information and messages that go and come from the user to the bot and vice versa, passing through the, MIA, the Telegram service, since we are using the Telegram platform, right? Yeah, no, maybe? Yeah, thanks. So <clears throat> if we look on the Telegram website, we have a list of uh, APIs great and if we look for libraries for using telegram we notice that we don't have uh, any official telegram library for python however telegram on the in uh, in its website recommended two libraries one is this telepot yeah, obviously and the other one is this bot API. Okay, then if you look on Google for how to create a bot for Telegram with Python or with a sentence shorter than this, you find several times this other library, this Python Telegram bot, so we can open also this. 
These are three libraries in Python with some introduction, installing, learning by example, documentation. Uh, no. uh, Uh, again, here you have some installation procedure. Notice that you can use pip to install the library. Hmm? pip install twix.botapi to install, a quick start with an example, and so on. And more or less the same in Telepot. You have an introduction, reference, example, a change log of every changes. So, great, we, have, we need to choose uh, which li library to use. So what are to you the, um, based on which we will choose one library or the other? For example, to you. Wh what we need, first of all? We need the Python 3 libraries not Python 2, right? Then, we need libraries that could be installed by pip. We need uh, outdated libraries, not maintained libraries. Updated libraries, what do we need? updated libraries, and that, these are things that we, we need to open Telepot, Bot API, and Python Telegram Bot to understand. There is support for Python 3, yes, no. If there is no support for Python 3, we can close the, the tab on our browser because the library is not suitable for us. It could be installed by pip, yes, no. If no, close the library, because now we want to install the library through pip. pip is maintained, is updated, it works with the API of today, yes, no. So if we look at these uh, three uh, libraries, we notice that all of them support Python 3, that is great. All of them are available on pip, again, perfect. All of them are well maintained. Hmm? This one received the last commit 21 di days ago. Okay, this one received a commit eight days ago. And this one was updated uh, on January, on January 7. A little bit less updated than the other two. Then, We would like to have some sort of documentation, some example, because I, I don't know how to create a bot in Telegram by myself. So if there is a library with some documentation on how to use the library, it's better, because I can start immediately to, to work with this library. And all of them have some sort, we can say, of documentation, more or less uh, good, more or less bad, but yeah, they have some documentation. So these, the, the mandatory, you can say, step are taken by all of the of three libraries. So how we can choose? I, I, I choose a Python Telegram bot in the end. Why? First of all, I excluded uh, the bot API. Because the bot API has no example. So you can start with its documentation, absolutely. It's less updated, yes. You can start with documentation that is here. Yeah, it has, this is this example here, and this is the documentation, yes. You can start from here, if you know how, how to start. But yes, there is something. The other two documentation are much, much better. And they, the other two libraries have a lot of examples both of them. So 
first of all I excluded this because it's good uh, but the other two are better then uh, moreover this bot API implements a slightly older version of the telegram API so maybe now that doesn't work anymore it's not the latest version of the API it's a previous version so okay we can eliminate for now this then we have other two choice the Python telegram bot the telepot so there is more a uh, uh, personal choice we can say we don't have any um, numbers any strong information that uh, give us an idea that one is better than the other uh, if you want numbers we can say that this has 200 forks and 1000 and something star and this other it has the double the number so it's more used the more appreciated we can say from developers so it's probably in case of problem this one could be more supported by its community for, for the you can say proba probability that one person among uh, for example 2000 will take this project and help with this project than one on 1000 then if you look at the example, the, uh, the not numerical reason, if you look at the example uh, that you have here in the example section and here the same, you feel, you, you open the, the example, Telepot is a little bit more sophisticated, but is also a little bit more complex to uh, getting started, while Python Telegram bot is simple, is simpler you read what it, do, it does and it's more immediate to understand what is the purpose of that library so I choose that one this one for getting started this Python telegram bot this Python telegram bot to getting started yeah. to getting starter started you can for example uh, start this getting started there is a tutorial for example, let's say, okay, first of all, you need to install the library is in the installation part. So let, let's install the, the, the library because I don't have installed here. So I take this name and I open PyCharm. You can install Python model by using pip on the command line or inside the PyCharm uh, environment. And in the meantime, we can open the AMI 2017 bot here. That's it. So we can then press start and see what happens after. We can close all, all these. and create a new project. And we can call it Telegram bot. Okay. And we can also create a new Python file. So we can also install here from settings in here in project interpreter you have a list of uh, packages that are installed you can notice that pip is one of the packages that is installed so we can install the 
Python Telegram bot package here plus we have to wait or we cannot wait and put it here. You see, people download the Python Telegram bot and all its dependencies. It depends from other two, three, three uh, packages that are future certify uh, where I lib three. We will use Python Telegram bot alone. The other three are dependencies. It collects everything and install everything inside Python so that here at a certain point uh, notice that Telegram is available. Yeah, here. So it's installed. You can also install from there, but now it's quicker to do from the command line. So we can try to follow the, the tutorial hmm? to, to create a simple bot. So first of all, I, I printed here this stuff so that I don't need to, to switch continuously. So first of all, we need to, we need to, to integrate with other model, you have to install it and import it. So we need to import Telegram. If we look on the documentation, we need to, to write from telegram.ext, I can enlarge this, import uh, updater. updater. Updater is uh, the object that allow you to create the connection towards the uh, Telegram server and uh, it's uh, responsible to ask uh, periodically what happens do you have any news? Do you have any updates for me? Do you have an update for me? And so on, again, again, again. It's his fault, it's his duty to do this. Hmm? So here, then we can define, for example, a main uh, uh, function and that will create a variable that I call the updater. That call that object, updater and give this object the token. We need to pass the token that we received from uh, uh, Telegram bot to um, interact, to be allowed to use the Telegram API. So the token is here, so I can copy this and in, as a string uh, we can put this, this here. And so we created uh, the updater. Then we are able to start the conversation between our bot and the Telegram server. Now we need to uh, create another object that is uh, the dispatcher. The dispatcher is responsible to get the messages and understand, okay, this is a text message, this is a voice message, this is a command, and perform a different operation according to the type of the message, if you want. Maybe you don't want to differentiate between these three uh, things, or maybe yes, you want. We, we, we want, we want to handle a command and a text message from a starting point. So we can get these, and from these, from this dispatcher, we can, for example, uh, add handler, something that will handle commands or messages, voice messages or textual messages, something, a function, we define here, the link between a specific type of item in Telegram 
a command, a text message, a voice message, a file upload, something like this, and a function here in our code that will perform some operation on this type of uh, command or message. For example, we can uh, use a command handler that define what happens when we start the conversation with the bot. No? I told you that when you open the bot and you press this start button here, you send a start command to the bot. And I, yeah, I have this in the slide. Common messages are structured in that way. You have standard common messages, start, help, something like that, but you can also create your own common message. And non-common messages are normal messages like free text messages. We want to send the greetings in our bot with the start common messages, that is the default message when starting a bot, and the e-cooperation will be performed by every non-common message. So every text that we send, we will give back to the user. So here, we define that we want a command handler for start that call the start function. So we need here handler. We need here to perform two operation because you see these two error. The first one is import command handler. And the second one is define the function. And now we can print something just to, I will delete this. Okay. Here we will do something clever with our start message. Then we can define here other handler for text, for voice and so on. And we will do it in a moment. But right now we don't start our bot. We create the updater object, we give it the token to connect with the Telegram server, we created the dispatcher for handling various type of uh, messages, command, text, and so on. And now we need to say to the updater that he needs to start asking to Telegram, please give me updates, and continuously. To do this, we use again the updater variable I created here. The updated variable has a start polling uh, fun function, method. The start polling method performed by default that operation. Every dot x, x time ask to the Telegram server, do you have any news for me? There is a better way to do this, but it requires some knowledge of uh, something that we don't yet cover here. So we use polling that is inefficient and it's easy from a network point of view, but it works and for trying and developing it's okay. In production we don't use polling obviously because it's quite easy that a bot continuously asks for do you have update, do you have update, do you have update, it's really then we can start polling and then we have to say also updater.idle. Update.idle is uh, a function, a, a method that say, please continues to run this program forever or when someone press control C or send a termination to the process or perform some blocking operation, it terminates your program, explicitly terminates your program. So if we start this program, it go on forever. Up to I, in this case, stop the program explicitly in some way. And it also handle this uh, stopping of the program in a, we can say, elegant way without throwing error, but completing, uh, completing every uh, operation that is pending in uh, the bot. 
and now we need to effectively start the, the program do you know what is this? Sorry. This instruction here, here, line number 17. No? No one? If uh, underscore, underscore, name, underscore, underscore, equal me. This is, uh, when I speak about Python, weeks ago I told you that Python doesn't have a main function this is this is sorry the Python equivalent to the main function these instructions say when this program is started by the command line by a, here by pressing run or by launching with Python please do everything that is here in this case when the program is launched alone call the main function, this function that is called the main. If this program is imported as a module, everything that is here is skipped, is ignored. As a module, you have access to the start uh, function and to the main function. But if you create something here, whatever you type here is ignored as a module and work only when the program is started alone. Is, again, the equivalent of the main function in other programming language. If underscore underscore main equal equal main. Underscore underscore name, underscore underscore equal equal main. Okay, so in this way, we can start the function. If I don't put this, this program doesn't do anything because it's defined with two functions that nobody calls. So I can try to start, no. Before starting this, we need to um, fix this. This is a function called when my bot send, my, the user send a start message. I, I cannot print something here on my computer, obviously. I need to greet the user. So the start for every command uh, messages, command handler, uh, the, mid, the, the function could have two parameters. One is bot, that represents the entire bot, running bot, and the other is update, that is the message. All the information related to the message. So here, for example, we would like to reply, reply with uh, hello because this is uh, the um, <coughs> we would like to reply with hello so here we can use this update object and say get the message dot reply text and here we can type the text we want to reply to the user. That is hello. This, will, this operation will reply to our user with hello. Here in the, in the update, you also have the message that is coming from the user now we have a command, so the message is slash the number of the name of the command. So there is nothing really interesting here. So we can use the the, the object to send our reply. So we can try now this. So we can run this, hopefully. Yeah, and it should not do this one. Um, 
and it should work. And again, here, yeah, absolutely. Because without this right instruction, nothing happens. Yeah, this is a, the truth. So here I start the program, it doesn't stop. So here, hopefully, if I press start, the bot will should reply, hello. Should reply hello. We never tried on this computer, but uh, obviously we should. Um, so updater, updater, uh, dispatcher, add handler, command handler, start polling. Okay, so let's try to, then we, 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 tr we, we try to understand, I try to understand, but let's try to, to go over and try to add, uh, so we can check that is, where is the problem. Um, I have a, uh, an idea, but uh, let's try to add a uh, textual handler, Some something that take our uh, command and uh, reply with the same message that I sent. So here, for a text on handler, I need to declare a message handler, and then I need to import here. Head handler. And I also write here the filters because I need it. So the message handler allow me to get messages, textual voice, object, no matter. And it wants two parameter. Again, the second one is the name of the function. And the first one, I would call it echo. And the first one is what type of message I want to consider. I want to treat a textual message, I want to treat voice message, what I want to treat. So here I want to consider only textual message. So I will write filters dot text. And so every textual message will go to the echo function. The echo function, we can define here the echo function like before, with two parameter, bot and update. And this is equal function should take from update the text that I sent to the bot, and maybe we can store here in a repeat the text, for example in a variable, so this is the text that the user brought. And now we can send the message back with again the same method as before, update.message.reply text, repeat text. We want, if the user say I, we want to reply with I. If the user say what time is it, we want to reply with what time is it. Again, again, again. Try again. Obviously, 
not. Let me check one thing. Ok, e so let's try to set up the proxy again. Yeah, mm, manual proxy configuration so that everyone will see that the Polytechnico has this proxy at the door, the, 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 the port. Uh, Try again, maybe this time it will be better. Obviously not. Try another time, then I will say that it works without any um, worries here. Okay, now it should uh, work that we will. So if you try this at home, I am quite confident that it works. I, I can show you on my computer um, that it, it doesn't use a proxy. Um, um, but again, I'm sorry. But so this, this should, uh, we can say this, uh, allow you to create a bot that take your message and reply to this message. So now we have you can imagine completed the step number one, that is greet our user, that is the start command, and step number two, that is uh, send back our message. I get the message that the user sent, every things that he wrote, and uh, I wrote here. Let me perform another check. Just. Just to understand if it's my. No, it's this one. Okay. So. So we have the, this wonderful bot that get our message and reply with the same text. Then all these will be on GitHub so you can try. If it doesn't work, please tell me. Uh, that's so I can have a, a reason. Um, now we can try to add the second part of our question. Our we would like to send a text to our bot. The bot should take the text, translate in voice message, and send the voice message back. Hmm? So 
we need to convert a text into a speech. We can use uh, some, few, online services. One of these is the Google Text to Speech API service. The other one is, for example, Voice RSS that will take a text and create a audio file with the same text in speech in various languages. So we will use a Python package that we will install here that is this GTTS Python package that uh, has a website on GitHub. It's available on PIP and it takes some tests, send it to the Google text to speech API, hopefully, and it will return a MP3, MP3 file with the same text as a voice message. Then we can send this MP3 uh, file to our user in Telegram hmm? so that we can create the third echo that is the vocal echo. So we need to install, first of all, this uh, uh, package. So pip install um, It again takes some dependencies. And it's installed. So here I can say again from GTS um, import. So we can import these other packages. So again, we can use the service of this message. Uh, if you want in Telegram, in this bot, you can also say, do something like this uh, when it works, obviously. Um, import uh, checked action. So you can, for example, say here, uh, you can create here the um, bot.send chat, chat action. Uh, that get two parameter, the chat ID, the conversation ID, and uh, the status. This line, what will do? This line, when this echo function is called, uh, in the conversation, say the bot is typing a message for you. And we can also have another action here instead of type, for example, um, upload audio. So we can um, upload audio. So we can, for example, say the bot is loading a voice file for you in our second uh, case. So here uh, I imported this. So everything remains equal, no changes. We want all text messages pass it to the echo function. The echo function is here. We can set this chat action upload audio. We, we have to get the text as before. We don't want to reply with text, so I can comment out this line. We want to perform two operation. Convert the text and send the mp3 file. So to convert the text, we can create a, well, a variable and then say that, for example, called the GTTS service, GTTS service wants two parameters. One is the text to convert in speech format, and the other one is the language of the text. So here, as the text, we can use this repeat text as language since this is a course in English, we can put English. Ian. It supports also Italian, French, other languages. So this called the Google text-to-speech service translate this text in a voice message and give you hopefully a MP3 file, a, a voice stream. You have to save this voice stream on your computer as an MP3 file for example, so with the command tts.save, and you can put a name from this, that is, for example, echo mp3, 
And at this point, we need to send back the message to the user. We cannot use update.message.reply text because we don't use a text, we have a voice message. To send something different from the text, we have to use the bot uh, object. The bot object has various command uh, like send voice. It also has send text. In this send voice, you can, this send voice need a chat ID and the voice object, the, the file, audio file. In this chat ID, we need to put our ID of the conversation like before this update.message chat ID. And as voice, we need to send a file, this eco file. So open, like we see with files, uh, eco.mp3 in RB, read binary. This should take our action, create a uh, text to our representation, uh, sorry, a voice representation of our text, save the MP3 and send through the bot. So now I think that it, it doesn't work again, so I can try, but. Yeah. But this one we can try for, for real, I hope. So, for example, We can start uh, the um, Python interpreter, and we can say from uh, GTTS, just to say something that works today, import, uh, and is uh, TTS equal GTTS of uh, a sentence that is, uh, for example, Hello, and uh, um, language that is English, and then we can say TTS dot save. That is the same thing I type in uh, the um, in PyCharm. And hopefully, in uh, users, yeah, you have a MCG that should play so something works today. This is our message that is sent to the Google server and come back as a text, as a voice message, with the same voice of Google Translate, more or less. Mm -hmm. So, it's only the, the Telegram part that is not working. But let me try this one. So, let me try another time from here, just to. You can start it not in PyCharm if it works. Um, I can clear the conversation here. Yeah. Okay. So here, if we I send the start message, yeah. I send the start message, and 
the bot to reply with hello, as expected, and for every sentence that I wrote, he will reply now with a text message. Let me edit the, the project so that he, he reply with text and voice. The secret is not to use my child. Um, here. I can type again, hello, this time uh, not with a capital letter, it will reply with the same text and uh, after a bit with, again, the same sentence before. And whatever I type, uh, what time is it? For example, it will reply again, what time is it? And you can also learn uh, English pronunciation this way. Okay, so, avoiding the proxy, the problem is solved. Okay, so this is, this is Python integration. Just to, to, to recap, if you want to integrate other packages, you can find it on the PIP or on the web. The, PIP website, you can also look for packages here on the Python package index. You can search here for uh, applications. So if, for example, you type GTTS, you see that there are some packages with GTTS like the first one, and you see also some brief description, the website, the typically the Python version that is support and so on. You can install it with pip in PyCharm and by in the command line or the terminal, and you can import like every other packages before, and you can create also something that you will not realize by yourself like a Telegram bot. You don't implement Telegram from scratch or WhatsApp from scratch. You can create a bot that can interact with this. Um, if you want to, I will publish the, the code of today, this, this evening on the GitHub, one file for the textual echo and another one for the voice echo. If you want to experiment more at home by your own, you can also try to perform an inverted echo, write a, instead of a, the user write hello bot and the bot reply holy tob, the same sentence specular or for example, ask to the weather by integrating a third library, the Yahoo weather library, for example, that asks the use service for the weather in a determined location and will reply with the humidity, temperature, whatever, for that location in a, day, in a certain date. On Monday in Ladispe, you will continue your to-do list manager, but you will provide this to-do list manager with a Telegram bot uh, uh, service to interfacing with this, so you can uh, create a uh, to-do list by using tele uh, a task using tra Telegram, remove uh, the task using Telegram, and so on. So I can stop here. Have a good night. <laughs>